One of the highlights of Murph is always the E3D table, and I'm here with Claire. Hi, Claire. Hi. How are you doing? All right, thank you. Yeah, tired, jet lagged. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, totally. Usually I talk to to Sanjay, but he's busy, so I get to talk to you. I, I'm kind of excited about You're that. You're lucky. I think so. What is the big cool thing that E3D is showing off here at Murph? The big cool thing? I mean, obviously it's all very cool. Um, but the big thing really for us today is the tool changing printer. Obviously it's got a lot of interest um, and really we want to see what the community wants from us. Well, I, I remember you released a blog on it and the blog talked about this cool motion system that you guys developed. And I know you weren't <laughs> sure whether or not you wanted the community to have an entire machine or if you thought the community might want bits and pieces to create their own. Well, how, what's been the response? What have people said? Um, I can't really release what the responses are quite yet, but we've had in the thousands of surveys completed, wow. which is outstanding. It's really above and beyond what we were expecting. And we've got some really interesting information in there. Some of it's surprising. Some of it's not what we were expecting at all. Um, but essentially, people love it. The idea of it's really exciting. So you've got up to four interchangeable tool heads. Okay. And an amazing XY, core XY motion system. Okay. Um, which, yeah, is out there on the market in some form already. But um, we've been playing around with that for about a year. Um, and we thought we'd take it to the community and see what they thought of it. Well, it looks amazing. And I, it's almost hypnotic in the way it moves. Yeah. How does it do? Does it perform well? Do you have some parts you can show us? Um, I've got one right here, actually. May I see it? Yeah, of course. So can you talk about this part a little bit? Is it three different materials or four? It's three different materials. It was actually printed with four, but it's printed this way up. So you print with um, scaffold support filament, which oh. is soluble, yep. but you can just snap it away as well. And then you've got PLA, um, nylon, and then edge, scaffold edge, uh, sorry, spoolworks edge, um, PETG there. And yeah, there's no purge. There's, there's a, a purge bucket, but there's no brine tower needed at all. Okay. So you just swap instantly between the tool heads. So it means that a 3D print is super quick now. Obviously, you can see it's super accurate. It's repeatable. We, we're not having problems. We're just churning these out time after time. Um, and it means that you can start mixing materials. So you can have a different temperature on one print head. You can have a 0.8 nozzle on one. You can have tiny, tiny. Uh, detail with a 0.25 or a 0.15 on another oh. to do your external perimeters, for example. Okay. So you can get some really cool effects going on, and, and the, the interchangeability between materials, I think, is what's really interesting people. Um, there's also the possibility to put other things on there. So we've got a flexible tool head, but we're developing a diode laser cutter as well. Oh, well, yeah. what I was going to get at was uh, like the BCN Sigma is an interesting machine because it has the dual independent extruders. So you can do two different nozzle sizes, two different temperatures, two different materials. Yeah. And this isn't just an additional two. This isn't just four tool heads. I mean, you like you said, you could have one that's a laser tool head. You could, yeah. you could add things to this machine that aren't necessarily a part of 3D printing, but yeah. still exist in the tool chain. Exactly, you can. So there's also the uh, subtractive, you know, CNC, milling right. potential as well. Well, one of the things I wanted to show off was was this. I mean, Benji's cool, Daniel Nare is here. It's it's neat to see a multi-color print, right? With yeah. four tool heads, yeah. but without a purge block. Exactly. That's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. So you, you, you're wasting a lot less plastic. Obviously, there is that purge that still needs to happen. But the purge but is software controlled, it. right? It is, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and it's super fast, super efficient. So there's not much wastage going on. Well, there's been a good year of development on this. So they've come a long way. Wow. Well, Claire, I want to thank you very, very much. I know Sanjay is going to give me some technical details, is, but yeah. I do appreciate You'll the overview. You'll get the good juicy stuff from him. <laughs> he's, a, he's very passionate about this, isn't he? <laughs> he is, yeah. Thank you. That was cool. Thank you very much. Uh, you ready? Time frame? Uh, three minutes. All right, cool. Can you do that? Yeah. Hey, Sanjay. Hi. Good to see you again, man. I know it's a long flight to get here, but I appreciate yeah, it. It's good to see I you. I so jet lagged. Yeah, I'm well, not actually drunk, contrary to popular not, belief. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. We have, not plenty, yet. Not we have yet. plenty of time. Yeah. This new machine that I was just talking to Claire about is fantastic. What were some of the technical hurdles you had to get over to create this right here? 
hurdle, a lot of the hurdles go away when you uh, bring out the design philosophy for this thing, which is like, if you don't have a budget, then what can you do? Oh. Which is like, so this has been Greg and I's passion. For, Greg over here is the unsung hero. He did all the CAD, like built the machine. I just sat behind Greg and like said, do this, do like, make it like that. Like, but Greg's really the one who, who sorted everything out. Uh, this machine is what happens when you build with no financial constraints, but you still observe good design for manufacturing, good design for assembly, and good, um, just good sound engineering practice. So. Oh, okay. So even though, even though there wasn't so much a budget like you're talking about, you still were approaching this at, for repeatability. Repeatability and manufacturability. Okay. So, if these parts arrive flat packed in a box to you, uh, well, Greg has done a few of these by now, but he can put one together functioning in 17 minutes. So it's fast. That's wet. Yes, yeah, that yeah. is very fast. And look, look at excluding the plastic panels. Look at the bill of materials. Right, one plate, two plate. The, this thing here, crossbar, rail, 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 two belts, four motors. That's it. Right, and the entire XY motion system bolts to this one plate. This plate does nothing, these extrusions are pre tapped. So you come along, you bolt your rails to your plate and your crossbar, you screw all your idlers which are under there I'll show you them in a minute then you bolt the extrusions on and you bolt the extrusions on these extrusions in the new version this is one big fat rail oh, so it's even, okay. even simpler so there's one extrusion there um, and the motor for Z on the new version goes there okay so the um, back plate of the motor is hard up against the steel here. Ah, so I literally see. every single motion motor mounts onto one plate. That's that's great. Yeah, so like glorious. We're printing edge at the moment, but it prints anything up to 140 degrees on the bed. Oh. 400 degrees on the nozzles. Oh, okay, so nearly anything. Yeah, like if they're materials and they can be printed together, it'll do them. So I need to, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. what, what happened here? It, does, did it pause? Okay, okay, so. The lie detector determined that was a lie. Oh! What it's doing here is it's going over, it's just dropped off, dropped red, off that one, right? the red head, which okay. is loaded with blue material, confusingly. Uh, the blue head is loaded with soluble support material. Ah, okay. The soluble support material doesn't like to be kept hot because it degrades with oh. PVA. So we script it so there is a inactive nozzle temperature. I see. Which is like 150 degrees. So it can drop down. Yeah, yeah. So, it, so now it's bringing the nozzle with the soluble support material up to temperature and then it's going to go in and it's going to grab it. Okay. What is the grabbing mechanism? Is it a magnet? But basically, there's a there's a T at the end. Yeah. And that T rotates. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that, there's that slot here. Yeah. And so that T goes in there and it rotates. But it's a bit more complex than that because obviously that's not going to provide a solid connection. Right. So. The, the T is spring-loaded. It wants to pull backwards. Okay. And it's not just a T. The wings of the T are like a propeller. They're slightly canted. So as it rotates, it cams forward. I see. And applies spring preload back to the kinematic coupling elements. I'm not going to go into the physics of kinematic couplings. <laughs> no, that's okay. But that tool head pickup um, is three micron repeatability. Three micron? Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's insane. Three micron is just with these kind of crappy prototype parts because these aluminium parts are critical to the precision and aluminium is like the worst material to make a kinematic coupling out of. It's soft, right? It's soft and it's also high surface energy and it frets. Oh. Well, I wanted to ask though, I mean, we, are, we, aren't, we aren't seeing a perfect print. So no. this isn't, I mean, this is an example of what yeah. you're trying to do yeah. It's been engineered, but we're, we're yeah. still, it's, this isn't a final product by any yeah. means, right? Exactly. And so that's why we're selling this machine as we're selling it, because we want to set expectations appropriately. So we're selling this machine as a motion system with no electronics and no tools. 
It's a project. Oh, it's definitely right? a project. It's a yeah. project. Um, it's very easy to put together. Um, and the software for the electronics, if you go with Duet, which is what we recommend, will be available on GitHub. Um, just put it on. Um, oh, okay. And no tools are included because everyone's use case is application specific. Some people want to print carbon fiber reinforced nylon through a volcano all day long with soluble support material. Some people want to print three pretty colors of glitter fill. Okay. Like, so. That's why we're selling the tools separately. Oh, um, okay. So you'll get everything that you see here, minus the material and the tools, and the electronics on the back. Yeah. You add the electronics, choose your tools, and add in your materials. Well, let me ask then, what are you selling what you're talking about for? Uh, so. We don't know how much it's going to cost yet because uh, we didn't know what demand would be like for this. Um, so what we've been doing is kind of a Tesla model, which is you can go on our website, you can pay a hundred dollar down payment that says I want a place in the queue. Okay. And obviously your order number is your your place in the queue. Apart from certain beta testers, who oh, that makes uh, sense, yeah, right? Because uh, they're going to give us great feedback to improve it for everyone else. Um, we think it's going to then cost about another thousand bucks more to get you the rest of the parts. That's not out. I mean, that's that's it's not expensive. Bad. It, well, that's, it is expensive, but I mean, we're yeah, we're talking talking about new stuff. Yeah, and that's with the carbon fiber rail and the gates cheating shoe belts <laughs> and the high wind rails and the higher end carriages and the machined aluminium plate. And like everything as you see it here with an improved Z-axis on one big high wind rail. That's kind of cool. Please, please, please fill in the survey on the blog post. because Go fill in the survey on the blog post. Because it's letting us know what price point people are able to cope with. So what we've learned thus far from the limited responses is the price point's a bit high. Okay. So we want to make a lower cost version where we keep exactly the same design, but okay. we change some of the materials and components for less reputable. So we will go with lower cost, high win equivalents that we quality control check. Okay. We will go with standard GT2 belt from suppliers that we already get GT2 belt from. We will use normal pulleys from normal suppliers. We will make the frame, top frame out of die bond, which is aluminum composite panel, which is still very, very stiff. Okay, um, but it's not this, but, but it's, it's still not, very, very it's stiff. Not, yeah. Um, it will still be aluminum extrusion, and it will still use the rails. It will still have the same very, very stiff Z-axis. Cool. So we're hoping we can get that down in the like 700 buck range, 600 oh, buck okay. range. Um, you still have to add electronics, and you still have to add tools. That doesn't sound too bad. It looks yeah. like you guys are well on your way to making something awesome, and it sounds like it, as long as you get enough yeah. feedback, you're really going to know what the community wants. But I suppose the thing is, we're not trying to make something awesome. We're trying to establish a standard for tool changing. So we're working with Lulzbot. We're working with BCN 3D. They want to implement tool changing. We want to make the tools and the grabbers. Okay. So we want an open standard for tool changing to exist. This is a reference platform. Okay. It's still pretty cool. So we want to have a tool that you can take off a BCM machine, put it on the reference platform, and then put it on the Lulzbot machine. That's the dream. That's the dream. That's the dream. Sanjay, my friend, thank it's you so much. Good. It's good to have you here. I appreciate you the too. talk. and. You too. Uh, do what you can to get some sleep, my friend. I, I, Jet lag's I need... real. Jet lag's real. Uh, well, hey, yeah. I can offer you one of these. <laughs> a little place here. Yeah. Did you get Sanjay's little butt crack? <laughs>